Now the question is I could have stopped uh, here only, but why did we do this part uh, this extension into this box molar transformation. So, we will see that now. So, what so what we are looking at now is the advantage of box molar transformation. Okay. So, to look into that let me just write down the two expressions which I have. So, the conventional one is x 1 is equal to root over minus 2 log s cos twice pi y 2 and x 2 equals to minus 2 log s sin twice pi y 2. And so, so this is the conventional one and this is my box Muller. So, where I have x 1 is equal to minus 2 log r square v 1 by r and x 2 equals to root over minus 2 log r square v 2 by r. So, now let us see how many mathematical operations we need to perform to for each of these two cases to get a pair of random numbers. So, let us start with the conventional one. So, the first mathematical step is one needs to do is multiplication. So, how many multiplications do we need to do? So, in order to get these two values of x 1 and x 2, so what we need to do is we need to do one multiplication that is uh, 2 into log s. So, this is one step which we need to do once and then what we also need to do is uh, we need to multiply twice pi and with uh, y 2. So, so, this is one. So, this step this multiplication we do one time and then this multiplication we do one time and the other multiplication is we multiply all the term under the square root with the cos or the sin term. So, these are two multiplications. So, in total to generate one pair of uh, x 1 and x 2 we need to do four multiplications. Okay. Then the next function operation is we need to do also a square root. So, how many square root we can uh, we need to do? So, if I evaluate this square root term once I can use it both for x 1 and x 2. So, basically what it means is I need to evaluate do perform one square root operation. And in a similar way we need to perform one logarithmic operation and then we also need to evaluate the cos or the sin of 2 pi y 2. So, that implies that we need to perform two trigonometric operations. Now, let us look at this box Muller transformed one. So, the first difference which we see between box Muller transform and the conventional one is here there are no trigonometric functions. So, no trigonometric operations. evaluation. So, remember this is the most expensive part, this is the expensive thing. So, I am getting rid of these two trigonometric operations and what is uh, extra which is coming on. So, let us revisit the multiplication operation. So, now for the multiplication operation, so we need to evaluate r square which is given by v 1 square plus v 2 square. Okay. So, for this r square we need to do two multiplications here. So, uh, basically a product of uh, v 1 here v 1 into v 1 and v, v 2 into v 2. So, basically two multiplications uh, which involves v 1 star v 1 and then we do v 2 star v 2 and then we need to do one to one more multiplication which is the product of 2 into log r square and this we can do only once and use for generating both the numbers. 
So, we need to have 2 star log. So, this multiplication term we do once <coughs> and then we need to do uh, 2 more multiplications. So, that is the product of this term under the square root into this fraction. So, that we need to do for 2 different numbers. So, basically uh, the term under square root into v 1 by r and the term under square root into v 2 by r. So, this is another 2 multiplications. Okay. So, total we need to do 5 multiplication operations. Then the square root is same as this one. So, we need to do just one square root operation because once we evaluate the square root of minus 2 log r square that we can use in both x 1 and x 2. And then finally, uh, one more thing is we need to do 2 divisions. So, we need to find v 1 by r and we need to find v 2 by r. So, so my uh, and uh, sorry I forgot also we need to do one logarithmic evaluation also. So, where we can compute the log of r square. So, this and this step these are all also same in the conventional method, but so what we did is we got rid of this expensive trigonometric operation by uh, doing 3 extra, uh, uh, extra mathematical operations that is I do 1 extra multiplication and 2 extra divisions, but this is, uh, but the overall cost of this will still be less than this one because the trigonometric operations are very expensive. And remember you have to j use some millions and millions of uh, random numbers uh, to in your calculation when you do a Monte Carlo integration. So, uh, repeating uh, doing these trigonometric operations millions of time. So, even though the difference may be of a fraction of a second on computing random number gen generating a pair of random number using this versus this, but if you multiply it by million times then it becomes a large number. Okay. So, with this we come to the uh, last part. So, what we will do is we will look into how multi dimensional integrations are done. Okay. So, what we want to do is, so, so the way we will do it is uh, rather than using abstract equations. So, we will take our example and see how one can tackle it. So, what I am interested to do is I want to inter in integrate perform these integration using the, uh, numerical tool and to be more specific using multi uh, using Monte Carlo simulations. So, this is a multiple uh, di multi dimensional integral. So, where I have this vectors quantities d x d y these remember these are vectors. So, each of them have 3 components. So, uh, and then I have a function which is a function of x and y. So, basically what it means is my x vector that uh, x is a vector contains x 1 x 2 and x 3 and my y contains x I write y in this form x 4, x 5 and x x. So, this is a 6 dimensional integral. Okay. And the form of my g x y is in this is the following. So, I write my function to be a exponential function, so which is e x p minus x square minus y square. Remember each x y these are all vectors minus x minus y whole square by 2. So, this is my function null form. So, if we, so how do we do this integration? So, if we look into the function carefully, so what you can see is that this is like a, I mean it, it, it has a resemblance to a multi dimensional Gaussian function. If I forget about this term, then this part here. So, basically what, so this first two terms if suppose this term is not there this minus a x minus y whole square. So, so if I just have this term, so it looks like a Gaussian function. 
So, what I will do is I will use the so I can evaluate this function in two ways one is by the uh, this integral in two ways one is by the brute force method where I do not care about uh, using a different distribution I use just the simple um, uniform distribution of random numbers to compute the integral and I can do a better way I, uh, I can use uh, this concept of inf uh, important sampling and change of variables. So, now since as I mentioned that this function looks like a Gaussian function. So, what I will try to do is I will try to map this uh, or I will try to use a set of random numbers which has the Gaussian distribution and to generate those set of random numbers we can use the method which is just learnt uh, in uh, so this box Muller transform method. So, and also what we need to do is we need to modify the variable. Uh, so, so the way we do it is following. So, we use important sampling and for that we use a Gaussian PDF which is of the form following form 1 by root pi e to the power <coughs> minus x square. So, this has a mean of 0 and a variance sigma is 1 by root 2. Remember when you try to implement this in a code. So, the box Muller method gives you a Gaussian function we, uh, which is uh, in which the sig the mean is still 0, but the sigma is 1 where as when we are using a Gaussian distribution for this particular case with a sigma 1 by root 2. So, one needs to be careful and keep that in mind when uh, one is generating the Gaussian distribution. So, you need to change your distributions uh, variance uh, from sigma equals to 1 to sigma equals to 1 by root 2 and one way quick tricky way quick way I mean one way to do that is just to multiply your you generate your random number as with a Gaussian distribution with sigma equals to 1 using the previous method the box Muller method and you just multiply it by the random number by 1 by root 2. So, that changes your distribution. So, how do we simplify this? So, let us so what we do is we rewrite the integral in this form. So, now you see we have 6 variables here. So, I need to multiply it with 6 such distributions. So, so if you remember uh, what we did in the earlier class. So, if I uh, have a function say f x which is which has uh, like an exponential fun which is like an exponential function or similar to exponential function. So, what I do is I multiply it by e to the power minus x and divide it by to the power minus x. So, that is precisely the same thing which we are going to do here. So, we are going to multiply it by e to the power minus x square by root pi. Now, since we have 6 variables, so for each case we need to multiply it by e to the power x square. So, basically we need to multiply it by e to the power minus x 1 square by root pi into e to the power minus x 2 square by root pi and till x uh, e to the power x 6 square by root pi. So, instead of writing it explicitly, I write it in a compact form. Uh, so, pi means here basically a continuous product where this i goes from, so this is still i, i goes from 1 to 6 and then I have my function which uh, is of the following form exponential minus x square minus y square minus x minus y whole square by 2 and this I divide once again with this term. So, the product 6 times product of uh, 1 by root pi e to the power minus x i square. So, if I and then I have d x 1, d x 2 to all the way to d x 6. So, if I do the simplification, so what I see is if I take this term here, this I can rewrite as basically d x 1, d x uh, sorry d y 1, d y 2 
and dy6. I have my I have my integral as uh, the limits are same and then what I can also see is that uh, this term. So, I have uh, in the uh, in the denominator I have 1 by root pi whole to the power 6. So, that basically becomes pi cube and then if I uh, divide this uh, uh, the numerator with e to the power minus x 1 square x 2 square and so on and so forth. So, basically uh, what I will get is uh, so I will be having e to the power minus. So, th these terms will cancel out x, uh, x 1 square x 2 square x 3 square and x 4 square x 5 square and x 6 square and I will be left with this term here which is nothing but I can write it as x 1 minus x 4 whole square plus x 2 minus x 5 whole square plus x 3 sorry x 3 minus x 6 whole square by 2. So, this is my simplified or modified uh, integral this becomes my modified integral. So, so now what we need to do is basically uh, generate the random numbers uh, with the Gaussian distribution and find out the basically find out the average of this one. So, that will give me the uh, integral. So, uh, so, so, so to write it in a code in a piece of code. So, remember to change sigma box Muller to sigma equals to 1 by root 2. So, otherwise your integral will be wrong. So, what I expect is that you write a code of your own and uh, find out what the value of the integral. So, you can do two things you can write the code with the brute force Monte Carlo and then you can uh, write another code with the important sampling that is the way we have discussed here and compare how quickly you reach the same level of accuracy by how quickly I mean with how many random numbers you need for the case 1 versus how many random numbers you need for case 2 to have the same level of accuracy uh, in the value of the integral. <laughs>